Hello and welcome to this week's assembly. I wonder how good our memories are. How well can you remember things? Well, I'm going to ask you some questions and you can just think and think the answers. How did you feel when you got up this morning? Can you remember what you had for breakfast? And when you got into the school, who was the first person that you saw this morning? What about last weekend? Can you remember what you did on Saturday? And can you remember what you watched on TV on Sunday? How about last week? Can you remember what the assembly was? What did I talk about last week? It sometimes gets difficult to remember things the further away we are from them. So in other words, the longer things are in the past, the harder it is to remember. Here's another little quiz. I'm going to give you some words and like you to see if you can th think what I'm thinking about. A fire, a garden, burgers and sausage. Yeah, a barbecue. What about this? I'm thinking of um, seashells, ice cream, sand, sun. Yeah, the beach, the seaside. One more. Friends, parcels, cakes, balloons. A party, a birthday party, perhaps. If these events happened a while ago, we can still remember them because they're happy events. It's easier for us to remember happy events, even if it's a long time ago. Also, if events are sad and happened a long time ago, we can remember them. For example, if you've had a pet that's died or maybe some friends moved away to another part of the country. You could probably remember that. Now I've got my poppy on today. And you probably know what that poppy reminds us of. It's used to help us remember something. It's used to help us remember something that happened a long time ago. Very many brave men and women from our country had to go and fight in a long, long war. Lasted four years, over a hundred years ago. It started in 1914 and finished in 1918. There might be a question on that, 1914, 1918. And it's called the First World War. When many, many people went and fought in Europe and many died and didn't come home. And their families and friends were very, very sad. But these brave soldiers were fighting for the good of our country. And we wondered, how can everyone in the country remember those people who had died and show their families who were sad that everyone was remembering them? Well, it was decided that there'd be a special day for remembering. The date chosen was the 11th of November. And that was because that was the day the armistice was signed. <coughs> Excuse me. The armistice was an agreement to end fighting. And so the 11th of November became known as the Armistice Day or more better known Remembrance Day. And it was decided that the poppy would be a symbol for Remembrance Day because when the fighting had finished and the battlegrounds where the soldiers had fought and all the ground had been churned up, poppy seeds were blown by the wind in there and the fields were full of beautiful poppies. And then from 1939 to 1945, there was another big war, the Second World War. And after the Second World War, it was decided that we would have Remembrance Sunday. 
So the second Sunday in November, the closest one to November the 11th, is called Remembrance Sunday. And on Remembrance Sunday, we remember the people from the Britain and the Commonwealth, both servicemen and service women, who died in the two world wars, 1914 to 18, 1939 to 1945. But we also remember, and we say our poppies, all the people in the armed forces who have died, given their lives in conflict since the Second World War. And on Remembrance Sunday, there are special parades and services and poppies are laid at war memorials. I've got a true story to tell you in, from World War I that I thought you might like, and then we'll have a quiz. So what happened in World War I? I mentioned the big battlefield. So one side of the big battlefield was the Germans and they were all in big trenches that were really high and they had to climb up ladders to look over and shoot their guns. And the British were all over that side. And in the middle <coughs> was called no man's land where no one owned it or run it. And the soldier, the armies from both sides shot shells at one another. And sometimes the shells landed in the no man's land and it got churned up. And soldiers from both sides would get out of the trenches. It was called going over the top and run with their rifles and try and shoot the other soldiers. But many people got shot there and um, died or lay wounded. Now, when the soldiers were wounded, some brave men took stretchers and ran into no man's land, bringing the wounded soldiers back. Now, one of these men was called Reverend George Kennedy. There's a question on that. Reverend George Kennedy. He volunteered at the start of World War I to be a chaplain. And he became quite well known because he gave the soldiers, every soldier, a Bible and a packet of cigarettes, because in those days we didn't know that cigarettes were bad for us. He gave the cigarettes called Woodbines, that was the brand, and so Reverend George Kennedy became known, his nickname was Woodbine Willie. But George Kennedy risked his life. He was well known for going in to no man's land with a stretcher in the thick of battle to give comfort to injured soldiers and bring them back into their trenches to try and save them. During that First World War, many people were asking the question, well, where is God when all this suffering's going on? Perhaps God is sitting somewhere up on a cloud, watching everything from a distance, like the generals in the war who sat safely at a distance and gave orders for soldiers to go over the top and risk their lives running across no man's land. But they thought, well, maybe God didn't really care. He wasn't bothered about what was going on. Or maybe he didn't even exist. Well, George Kennedy believed something different to many people. He believed that God was there all the time in the middle of no man's land, in the middle of the battlefield, that Jesus was suffering alongside the soldiers because George knew that Jesus knew what it was like to suffer, to be scared and lonely and to have a horrible pain and give his life for others because that's what happened to him when he died on the cross. George believed that as the soldiers were giving their lives to try and bring peace and safety to Britain, so Jesus had given his life to bring peace between people and God. And today, Christians believe that Jesus in the, is in the middle of conflict. <coughs> Excuse me, what, whatever that conflict is, whether it's wars or whether it's conflicts that you're having at school or at home and in your lives. Christians believe that Jesus wants to help those who are in conflict. To help us cope with it and to bring something good out of it. So if you wear your poppy 
one of these, or maybe you've got a wristband or one of the rulers that flick and snap. You can have those with pride. And when you wear them or you use them, you're remembering together with everyone else on Remembrance Day and around this time that we're remembering those soldiers that gave their lives. Well, not only soldiers, but Air Force people and uh, Navy people gave their lives for our country. Let me say a short prayer and then we'll have a quiz. If you like my prayer, you can say amen at the end. Dear God, thank you for all those people who have given their lives serving our country. We thank you for all those who serve our country today. We pray for all those who are caught in war-torn areas of the world, wherever they might be. We pray for peace in these areas. Amen. OK. Question one. What day is Remembrance Day? What day is Remembrance Day? Number two, when was the First World War? You can have a point for one of the years. Number three, when was the Second World War? They're quite hard questions. Number four, why was the poppy chosen for Remembrance Day symbol? And in the story I told, what was the reverend's name? What was his real name? Number six, what two things did he give to soldiers? And number seven, what did he do during the battles when soldiers were being shot? What did he do? And number eight, why did George think that God or Jesus understood the suffering of the soldiers? OK, some of those are difficult, but I hope you got on well. Number one, Remembrance Day is the 11th of November. Number two, the First World War was 1914 to 1918. Three, the Second World War was 1939 to 1945. You can have a point if you get one of those years. <clears throat> They're quite hard. Number four, why was the poppy chosen as a symbol for Remembrance Day? Because poppies grew on the battlefields. Something like that you could put. Number five, the Reverend's name was George Kennedy. George Kennedy. Number six, what two things did he give out to soldiers? A Bible and cigarettes. Number seven, what did he do during the battles? He went and rescued injured soldiers. You could put helped injured soldiers, something like that, get your point. And finally, why did George think that God understood the suffering of the soldiers? And it was because Jesus had suffered. So he was saying that Jesus knew what suffering was like because he had suffered when he died on the cross. I hope you enjoyed that assembly. I hope you learned something. And I hope you will be able to remember all those people who have given their lives for us in the past. And it's also a time where we can also remember people that help us today. Bye. Bye.